Hey everybody and welcome back. Welcome back to a brand new video. Today's video is going to be a fun roundup of the year that was. I kind of can't believe that I'm sitting here and filming this video. 2023 just flew by and the first month of 2024 is now done and dusted. I obviously can't keep up, but there were many things that were tried and tested throughout 2023 and we need to talk about the standouts. And so in this video, I'm going to be talking you through my top 10 wardrobe favorites of 2023. All of the items that were featured in this video were either purchased or sent to me throughout the year and I've had a chance to properly road test them and I have zero hesitation in recommending them to you all. And so we've got 10 items. Let's get this party started. So the first item, and I'm not going in any particular order here, is the Cezanne Will Jacket. I have done many Cezanne unboxings on my channel. I really enjoy shopping from Cezanne. And their Will Jacket is one of their classic items. It always appears in like their top 30 items. It's one of those pieces that's released in so many different colors. They've got sort of their core collection and then they've got the seasonal updates that they always release. And so I have two versions. I've got the indigo version and I've got the tan suede version. And I find that both of those are so different from each other, even though they're the exact same style. I think for me, they epitomize that French sophistication. Really simple, really relaxed, but just very stylish. I always feel very put together whenever I'm wearing the wheel jacket. It's a very casual jacket too, and so it works to elevate my casual looks. The indigo version was the first version that I bought, and I followed it up later on in the year with the suede version in tan. And I don't know whether it's because it's my most recent purchase, and so it's like the new kid on the block, but I really do like the suede one. I think the suede one is the standout between the two at the moment. It's also so different from all the pieces that I have in my wardrobe. When you think traditionally about leather suede jackets, you know, those moto jackets come to mind, but I like how this is a real sophisticated take on it. And so the Suzanne Will jacket, chef's kiss, very much a 2023 highlight for me. Number two on this list are the Arquette Merino tops. And I know that I'm cheating a little bit because I have harped on about these tops for years and years, but I added a new color to my wardrobe in 2023. I added the lilac version, which I hope is still available at the moment. I know that we have opposite seasons and Arquette have their summer range out right now, but the lilac version has been a real pop of color in my workwear in particular. And I'm quite enjoying lilac too. I'm wearing lilac at the moment. I think it pairs really well with navy, which was one of my favorite neutral tones. And I just really love the Arquette Merino tops for the reasons that I have stated previously. They are just excellent layering tops. They are really warm, but they're not bulky. They look great under blazers. They are just top notch quality. I always get myself the size small. They constantly feature in my Instagram reels. I don't really think there's much more to say about these tops except that they are the best. And so I was really glad to add another color to my rotation. My next 2023 favorite, number three on this list, is a style of shoes from a brand that I only discovered at the beginning of last year, Ally Shoes. I have waxed lyrical about their shoes because I've really gotten to know a lot of their styles across their range. I've even got a comprehensive brand review on my YouTube channel where I talk about all of the styles, but the standout style for me has to be their lower block heel. And I've got two pairs here that I've just ripped out of my wardrobe, but I do have a pretty solid lower block heel collection. So this is the style in the gray gray suede and as you can see it's got a really supportive heel this is two inches high or five centimeters and there are so many comfort features that are embedded in the shoe there is this plushy arch support there's a toe bed there is a rubber sole the shoes are offered in four different widths and also in half sizes all the way from us four and a half all the way to 12 and so you'll be able to order a shoe that actually fits your foot they're also made to order as well and so it's none of this you needing to settle for something straight off the rack that doesn't quite fit you. I think what's been so game changing about having ally shoes in my wardrobe now is the fact that I've been able to order shoes that have been tailored specifically to my size and to my width. And so these have been an absolute game changer when it comes to work. Obviously this is the gray suede version here, but I've got quite a big collection. I've got beige, I've got a red suede color. Also got here, just to illustrate to you, an emerald green color, which I've been really loving. They have such a huge range of colors across sort of like that calf leather 
or that suede leather fabric depending on the finish that you're after and I also have a discount code as well so you can use Virginia 40 and you can take 40 US dollars off a pair of shoes which is a sizable discount considering that these are a bit of an investment but I definitely think that they're worth it because discovering these shoes in 2023 completely set the tone for my work here I just love the fact that I can walk around in heels and my feet aren't crying out in pain it's hard to believe that that's a win and just all of the uncomfortable shoes that we've put up with all of this time. So next up on my list, I've got more shoes because I don't have enough in my wardrobe, but they are sandals from Baird Footwear. And I was fortunate enough to buy two pairs of sandals in the latter half of 2023. The first pair that I bought are these ones that I'm sure you are very familiar with if you follow me over on Instagram. These are the Sparrow sandals and I have worn these so much. I wear them on weekends, I wear them to work. I think the closed toe nature of them make these office appropriate in my humble opinion. And they're a really sort of dainty, dressy sandal thanks to the braided leather and I thought that they might be a bit delicate or you know potentially a bit flimsy but these have been so hard wearing they're so durable I bought them at the beginning of October last year and I have worn them constantly the soles haven't really worn down at all and there are no holes in terms of the buckle you sort of just strap them up and just poke it through one of the holes in the braiding and it hasn't worn down at all I thought that was a little bit strange at first when I bought them but they've been totally fine it hasn't worn down the braiding either. These come in black as well as an espresso brown which I have here and I really loved the softness of the brown. It still looks dressy but it's just a little bit softer overall. I find that there is just a little bit more versatility and it's easier to sort of style it down when it's in this colour. I know of many of you who have taken up my recommendation to buy these shoes and I'm getting a lot of great feedback from you guys as well and so take it from me and my peeps that these shoes are the absolute business. Baird is an Australian brand and similar to Ally Shoes they are also a podiatrist designed shoe company and so there are all these comfort features that are also embedded in the design as well. I think as I am progressing into my old age I am now really embracing podiatrist designed shoes but we don't have to settle now for those really daggy shoes that you find in the pharmacy. Podiatrist designed shoes now take the form of something rather aesthetic and so I think that is something to be rather grateful for. I have another pair of bad shoes that I bought a couple of months ago. These are the Fisherman style sandals and this is called the Bitter the turn that's how you pronounce it. I had a pair of Fisherman sandals from Whitner that I bought a couple of years ago and I really love the style but I wanted to sort of upgrade them to something that was a little bit more friendly on my feet and I'm really glad I have these. These are offer a very different look to the braided sandals that I've got. They're obviously a bit chunkier. They are also more weighty and they feel more weighty on my feet as well, despite them still being comfortable. But I just wanted to point that out because I do find that they offer two very different looks. These are obviously dainty and feminine in their look. These are just a little bit more chunky. I style these both for work and for the weekend. I find that the design mimics a closed toe shoe. And so again, I feel like they are office appropriate. Bed sandals are a bit of an investment and it took me some time to sort of convince myself to spend that money but I'm so glad that I did. I wish that I bought them earlier because I've gotten so much wear out of them. I think that if you fill out a survey you can save $30. It was on the website the last time I checked but I paid full price for both of these bad boys. I tried to scour the web for a discount code but my search failed. I also tried to wait to buy these during the Black Friday sales but they didn't go on sale and so I ended up buying them after that sale period was over. So yes, I can't be faulted. I did try, but alas, I failed and paid full price for both of these. My husband made croskets with avocado and Vegemite. Delicious. The fifth item on my list is another pair of shoes. Don't worry, this is the last shoe entry for this video. And it's probably a bit of a predictable entry, but it is the Adidas Sambas. Every man and his dog has these. And you know what? I totally understand why, because they look totally chic with their slimline profile. They're really comfortable. They're really easy to style. I paid a premium for these in the middle of last year because it was during a period where they were really scant and there wasn't much stock going around and so I bought them off Farfetch. I think within a couple of months Adidas were able to get everything sorted and they were able to meet demand and so now you can find these 
these everywhere. The core colors, I think, are the white version, and they also come in a black version, which I have been very tempted by. But I get a lot of questions from people asking whether it's worthwhile buying these because it's such a trend piece. But I think absolutely do it because I get so much joy wearing these. I just find that they're just so easy to style. They're very low maintenance as well. And I also wear these to work just because they're very minimal in their look. I mean, there are heaps of minimal white sneakers out there, but I like how these have a bit of a story to tell. I like how these, you know, are a bit of a revival from vintage time. And so that's why I've enjoyed wearing these so much. Are they the most comfortable sneakers in my collection? Probably not. I would put my New Balance 574s as more comfortable than these because they've got this spongy insole and Nike Air Max obviously are really comfortable too because I've got that spongy air bit, very technical term, in the sole. But the Sambas are just a really good hybrid of both comfort and aesthetically appealing shoe. So yeah, that's why I have enjoyed them so much. The next item that I have on my list, which I've just pulled from my wardrobe, is a pair of trousers. These are from the Frankie shop. These are the Mesa cargo trousers. And I love these so much. They're like a cross between a really casual cargo pant and a really sophisticated tailored trouser. I wear these mainly to work or in dressier sort of off duty looks, but I just really love that cargo pant detail and how it doesn't take away from the fact that they're a really sophisticated pant. As you know, I have many pairs of trousers from the Frankie shop. I've got the B pant in three different colors and I feel like this is the new favorite style of mine from the brand. The khaki has been a really easy color to pair. They also come in black and come in a beige color, but I would highly recommend these. If you have been mulling about these, because I know that these were really big a couple of years ago, they featured in many articles and every influencer and their dog was wearing these trousers. I definitely still think that you should get them because I think that they are a really classic style despite having a few sort of trendy elements to it. I can see myself wearing these for many years to come and just while I'm talking about the cargo pants as well thought I should do an honorable mention to the matching vest which I have in the beige color and this is an asymmetric style vest which I think is just a really cool design element I've got a fair few vests in my wardrobe but this is my favorite style out of the lot because I just find that it's just so different it's really dressy it's also a really nice neckline that it provides like it feels really conservative it's not like shell like my girls aren't popping out for example not that they're that big anyway but you get the picture like I feel like it's not a gapy neckline and it can be dressed up but it also can be relaxed with a pair of wide leg jeans and so I think the Frankie Shop Mesa range their pants and their vests are just excellent excellent additions to one's wardrobe and certainly a favorite of mine from 2023 <laughs> The next item on this list is probably the most sentimental item of the lot and it is my Gucci horse fit bag. Just posted a review of this bag on my YouTube channel now that I've had it for over six months. This bag is the ultimate slashy bag for me and represents a few milestones including me and my husband's wedding anniversary as well as a promotion that I was able to get at work and so I wanted to treat myself to a bag, a classic bag that I would use for many years and this was it. After much deliberation, I thought it would be the Loewe puzzle bag, but it wasn't and I'm really pleased with this one. I've shared my journey about this bag, I feel, several times now on the blog as well as on my YouTube channel and I've been really pleased with this. The bag comes in so many different colours. It comes in sort of a leather option, a canvas option as well. I have this in the small size, but it also comes in a smaller mini size, which has the ability to be worn crossbody. But I have really enjoy this bag. I think that it is just such a beautiful design. I love the minimal detail of the horse bit as well and it just represents a lot of happiness and love for me. It was the only designer bag purchase that I made last year and I think with the way that things are going at the moment with interest rates and cost of living I don't think that I'm going to buy a designer bag this year but I have reached purse piece in my wardrobe as well so there is no need to and so I feel like this sort of wraps up a designer bag purchasing era for me. So yeah yeah, there is much to say about this bag, but I just don't want to sound like too much of a sap. <laughs> but if you want sort of a fulsome review about it, like usability and weight and what fits inside, then you should definitely go and watch my dedicated video on my channel. The next entry 
three that I have on this top 10 favorites list are Bellroy Tokyo bags. So as you know, a couple of years ago, I added the Bellroy Tokyo tote pack to my wardrobe and that completely started my Bellroy bag obsession. And last year, two new bags were released from the Tokyo range, the Wonder Tote as well as the Tokyo Crossbody. And you might recognize the person who was in their campaign imagery. for me to be involved in the Bellroy campaign. I think it is the coolest project that I've worked on with this whole What V War world and so just really grateful for that opportunity. But as a result of being involved in that campaign, I have very much gotten to know and become very acquainted with the Tokyo Wonder Tote, which I have here in the 12 litre version in their plum colour. And I've also got the Tokyo Crossbody bag, which I use when off duty. And this is one of the more dressier crossbody bags that they have in their collection because they have a lot of sling bags and a lot of hip packs that uh, have more of an outdoorsy personality to them, whereas this camera bag shape makes it look a lot dressier. And as you can see from all the outfits that I've styled, I have very much gotten a lot of wear out of this bag, as well as this bag too. And while I've got you, I've only just been sent the larger version of the Wonder Totes. This is the 15 litre version, and a review is coming soon about the Wonder Tote range. And so at the moment, I'm testing this out. I've been taking it with me to work. That's sort of what's happening in the next couple of weeks. I'll hold up the two bags so that you can see the sizes. This is obviously the smaller 12 litre version and the 15 litre version but you can expect a full review of the Wonder Tote bag on the blog within the next month or so. There you go eh? Number nine in this list is my coat and I had to dig this out of storage because we are in the height of summer here in Australia. But it is a coat from The Curated. This is the London style coat. I've got a full review of all of the coats in my collection from the brand on my channel. That said, it is a little bit old. It's probably about a year or two old now. So I probably have to update that one soon. But my favorite style from their range has to be the London because of its relaxed double breasted style. I already have the London coat in navy, which which has been a favorite piece in my wardrobe for the past few years. But the chocolate version was one that I was really fortunate enough to add to my collection last year. I went to a dinner with the curated when the founder was in Sydney and I was able to select this coat. Me and Jamie Lee and Helen, we all rocked up in the same coat. It was hilarious, but it just shows what good taste we all have. So if you're not familiar with the brand, the curated is based out of Norway, but the founder is Australian and she has a essentially been able to make all these premium luxurious coats at a really good price point. And so this coat here is made of 70% wool and 30% cashmere. You'll find a lot of luxury coats like from Max Mara, for example, they will only have 10% of cashmere content in their coats and they will charge double or even triple the price of the price tag for a curated coat. And so she's really been able to streamline the process and offer the coats at a more accessible price. Granted, it is still an investment because you are paying for a premium fabric, but you're not paying Max Mara or high-end designer prices. I've had a Max Mara coat on my wish list for many, many years, but since building up my curated coat collection, that want has now just dissipated. Their coats have definitely satisfied any want that I had for a luxe designer coat. And so I've got this one in a size extra small. Their sizing uh, changes depending on the style that you go for. And so you should definitely look at their website and the size guide that they have. Their custom Customer service team is quite good too, very responsive. And so yes, this is was probably the only coat that I added to my wardrobe last year actually, but I did very well for the one and only coat. And again, I think I've got a thing for brown. I do love brown. I just find it just very easy to style. And I just think that this color is just incredibly flattering. I also know of many of you who have also taken up my recommendation for this coat. I think because I was wearing it so much and I was just spamming your eyeballs with it all over my Instagram. <music> And the last thing on my list of favorites, just to round up this top 10 favorites party, are knit dresses from Romaine Berger Christensen. Now they're a Copenhagen based brand. Their dresses typically retail for about 350 Australian dollars, but I always get all of my dresses from the brand from the outnet. They're always at least 40% off. I've got two here. This is the first one that many of you have seen and many of you have also bought after I posted about it. And I have another one in navy in the same style, but with this sort of 
of like ribbing detail on the arms. I find that even though knit dresses can be quite fitted, a lot of the A-line dresses from the brand can be really flattering, particularly if you are pear-shaped like me or have a bit of a mum-tum like me as well. I find that these sort of skim the body in a really flattering way and they tend to highlight the best parts. One of the great things about these dresses as well is that you can just throw it on and that's it. Your outfit is done. You don't have to faff about with separates or anything like that. And the polo neck style of each of these dresses just makes these a lot dressier and a bit more elevated. And so I really enjoyed wearing these. I really enjoyed discovering these. In 2023, I can see myself adding more colors to my collection this year. And so that's it guys. That's a wrap. A rather belated roundup of my top 10 wardrobe favorites that I added in my wardrobe in 2023. Thank you so much for all your support over 2023. And I'm really looking forward to sharing more with you throughout the course of this year. I've got heaps of ideas percolating and so I am looking forward to sharing those with you. As is the case, I will have everything that I have mentioned in this video linked in the description section below with sizing information and all of that. And I will see you guys in my next video. Bye.